Hello, architects. Are you building applications that need to read messages from a queue? And are you running them in a container? What if I told you there was a way you could do that without needing a long running task? And I'm sure you've all been there. You've written some code. It's a long running task. Maybe it does some work every five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You might be thinking, James is just going to tell me you can replace that with Lambda because that's the way to do it. But no. What if I told you there was a way you could do that with a container that scales to zero, that only does work when there's work to be done, but you're still packaging that as a container? There's a way. Let's find out how. Let's start by thinking about exactly what it is that you need to do. So in the past, maybe you've had some kind of queue. You've got a process that is popping messages onto your queue and you need a way to process them. So you write a big application down here that's running all the time, every minute, every day. And when there's work to do, it's gonna look at the queue. Maybe it does that every one minute, it pulls the queue. If there's messages here, they will then get pulled and the work will be done by your long running process. This is perfectly fine, but there's a lot of logic you need to manage here. You need to manage the polling from the queue, work, and then maybe actually deleting the messages from the queue after the fact. And you're doing that every one minute, even when there's no messages in the queue. So what other alternatives do you have? Well, you've still got the process over here and you've still got your queue. Of course you do. And you've still got some compute down at the bottom here that's actually going to do the work to process the messages. All of that is still needed, of course it is. And then what you need is a way to get the messages from here to here. Sounds simple, right? And of course you could write another custom piece of application logic that sits in the middle there and acts as like a intermediary between the two points, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna get a bit smarter. And we're going to use some AWS managed services to do that. Because what you really need is some kind of orchestrator, something working in the middle here that is going to act as the poller from the queue and manage that relationship with the queue to take the message from the queue, pull it into the orchestrator, and then actually delete the messages after the fact. And then you want that to be passed on to your compute. And you only want this to be passed on to your compute as and when there's work to be done, when there's messages there, and of course you do. Let's have a look at how you can do that with the magic of the AWS CDK. Here is something like the code you've probably written in the past. I know this is .NET application code. The same will apply for whatever language you're using, I am sure. You've got an SQS client. We're using Amazon SQS as the queue source. You're gonna receive the messages from the queue. You are then going to loop over each message one by one by one by one. And then after the fact, you make a call back to SQS to delete the messages from the queue. And you need to handle errors so that if there's an error, that message doesn't get deleted from the queue. You need to understand that logic of how things get reprocessed, the add importance, and all of that stuff. This is, this is fine. Now, what if I just snap my fingers and we end up with this? This is the code without a poly. So you see, we've still got this execute method. We're still doing the work for each message in the messages. But actually, instead now we're reading the input message from an environment variable. This might seem weird at this point. How are you getting your messages into an environment variable, James? Well, how this application is gonna work now is the container will run. The messages will be read from the environment variable. The work will be done and then the container will just close. It will shut down and it will end. That's what we want. Remember, you want this to scale to zero, but you still want to use a container. And the magic of this actually working comes from my CDK project. So what you have got here is a ECS task definition. If you're not familiar with ECS, that's the Elastic Container Service. It's a container orchestration service provided by AWS. And the first thing you're gonna do with ECS is build a task definition. So we're setting up some roles here for the actual execution to use. This will include things like being able to pull from ECR to download the container image. And then the important stuff is actually 
this stuff here. We're defining a task definition. A task definition is what ECS uses to know how to run your application. So this specific task is going to be ARM64. It's going to run on Linux. It's got 1024 CPU, 2048 meg of memory. And then we're using the two roles that you've just created higher up. And we're going to use Fargate. Now, if you're not familiar, AWS Fargate is a serverless way to run containers. With Fargate, you simply pass in the CPU and the memory, and AWS does the rest. All you care about is your container. And then finally, we're going to add a container to this task definition. So we create a new container, and the AWS CDK can actually bundle your container up for you. So when you define the image you want this container to use, you can simply just pass the path to your Docker file. Got your task definition, you've got your container within that task definition, the CDK is going to package that up for you. Excellent. You've got a task to run. And then what we then what you're going to use is AWS step functions. And you're going to use step functions to actually trigger your ECS task. So there's a feature of step functions that allows you to run a task in ECS. So if you have a look at the actual state machine now, the logic for the step function, you see we're using a ECS run task. We're passing in the cluster name and the task definition that you want to run and also the network configuration of where you want this task to run. This needs to run within a network, of course. Then that's the, the important bit here is this overrides section. What this override section allows you to do is override the parameters that are going to be passed to that running task. So what you're doing is you're overriding the sample container and you'll notice sample container matches the same name that you had in your task definition, sample container, and you're overriding the input message environment variable. And you're overriding that with a property from your state machine. So the actual, we're actually passing state from the workflow execution into your task as an environment variable. So step functions is what's actually going to trigger your container. How do you now get the message from the queue to the container, to the workflow? And that's where the magic of event bridge pipes comes in. EventBridge Pipes is a service that was announced by AWS at reInvent last year in November 2022, I think. We're in 2023 now, right? And Pipes allows you to create these point-to-point -point integrations, much like a pipe in Linux. And with a pipe, you can set a source and a target. So the definite we have the you have the definition of the pipe here. The source of the pipe is our queue. And the target of the pipe is our step function. We're pulling messages off the queue, running through the pipe, sending them into the step function. And within the CDK code, we've got some roles here to allow the, the pipe to be able to start the workflow, to allow the pipe to be able to receive and delete messages from the queue. And you're also creating the queue as part of this workflow source just to spin everything up together. So what have you now got? Well, let's just quickly recap what you've built. So you've got your container image down at the bottom here. This is the thing that's actually going to do the work to process the task. And that's going to run using Fargate and ECS, which makes it serverless. Yay, serverless. You've then got a queue up at the top that is using SQS, and that's what your messages are going to get placed into. And then you've introduced event bridge pipes. How do I draw a pipe? Let's go for something like that. A pipe kind of looks like my queue, but a different way around, but we'll, we'll get past that. And pipes is going to pull the message from the queue. Pipes is going to manage that relationship with the queue, pulling from the queue, deleting from the queue, handling different messages and things like that. Pipes is doing that for you. Pipes is then going to pass your message to a step function, to a workflow left out my box then, step function. That's a step function, I promise. Step functions is then going to trigger your task in ECS, passing the message as an environment variable. Environment variable. That will then run your container. The container will do its work and then the container will shut down. So an actual message is going to start here through the pipe into my step function, through into my container. Container does the work. 
everyone is happy. Serverless processing, no long polling. Let's actually have a look now how this works in practice. So here you are now in the AWS console. I've deployed this using CDK deploy and we're gonna test this out. So let's send a message onto my queue and let's say, hello, YouTube, smiley face. Send that message onto the queue. Now what's going to happen is EventBridge Pipes is going to pick that up. Let's go over to the EventBridge console. You'll look at pipes and you'll see we've got one pipe here that is running, taking messages from my queue, passing them to my step function. You can then go and have a look at the step function and let's just have a look quickly at the definition of the step function. So what the workflow is doing is generating a string representation of the actual body and it's gonna pass that out as a string in a data property. And that data property is then going to be passed to your step function task. You see that in the input message there. So back to my step function now. By this point, there should be a brand new execution. There you are. You've got the generated string of had payload. So here is what pipes passed into the workflow. And you'll notice that pipes passed in an array of messages. So if you set the polling up in the right way, you can process multiple messages simultaneously. And the output of that was just a string representation of that message. And then you've got the ECS run task to actually go off and run the task. Over to ECS now, you'll have a look and you'll see actually there's no tasks running in ECS. Now that's interesting. If you have a look at the stopped tasks, you can see there was a task started 58 seconds ago, one minute ago. So in the time that I've been talking, the task has already ran and already executed. And I can prove that to you. If I go over to CloudWatch, you see I got one event at 10.58. Have a look at that. And there is hello YouTube smiley face. The work has been done. The message has been passed to the container and the container has shut down afterwards. Let's do that one more time so you can actually see the container in progress just to prove this isn't some YouTube magic going on here. So back to the queue. Hello again, YouTube. We'll have two smiley faces this time because we know this is going to work. You're going to send the message onto the queue and then you will come into ECS and look at the running tasks. And I'm going to sit here and hit refresh. I'll probably pause the video and come back. Ah, there we go. I promise you all I've been doing is sitting here pressing refresh. You look at the task. The task is starting. The status is pending. Okay, this all looks good. You can see the environment variable that's been passed to this running container, all looking good. The, the container is now running, which means my work's going to be done. If you come over to CloudWatch, we've got one new thing in CloudWatch at 11 o'clock, which is perfect. And then the container is deprovisioning. There it goes, it's that quick serverless containers on AWS driven by messages from a queue only doing the work when there's work to be done. It really is as simple as that. You can have step functions and pipes orchestrating these messages from your queue and you can then build container-based queue processors working in an event-driven way without needing long-running polling tasks do it when there's work to be done. Be more serverless. Think serverless first. I will see you all next time.